Hello there, friends, ladies, gentlemen, fellow firearms enthusiasts. Welcome back to Crooked Horse Rifle Pistol out of Lamar County, Mississippi. Well, today I went up to the gun show up in Lowell, Mississippi. And it's probably one of the few times where I actually left a gun show empty-handed. And quite frankly, I really wasn't too impressed with the, you know, what was there. You know, if you want a Glock, there's 8 million Glocks there. Well, that's really about it. I was hoping to get a PDP. But, I didn't, but believe it or not, there wasn't a single seller there that had a PDP. But anywho, weather finally broke. Quit raining. So I figure, let's go step out to the range. So we got uh, out on the range. I was going to you know, do some shooting with uh, you know, this Gershon high power. But then I kind of remember, I've been getting quite a few questions lately of... Uh, for FN reflex regarding accuracy issues. So I figured I'm going to take advantage of this time and uh, we'll put the reflex through a series of drills just to see you know, if uh, we have any issues with the accuracy and whether we shoot low to the, uh, low to the left like uh, a lot of people do, you know, claim it does. In fact, now my first uh, my first time shooting this pistol I had issues with the shooting lower left, but uh, I've had to had opportunities to shoot it a lot more, and I think I might have been able to correct that. So let's go get the range set up and shoot this reflex and see what happens. So for this drill, basically now it's going to be a simple drill. We're going to shoot paper target three yards. 5 yards, 7 yards, and 10 yards. You see, you know, how the shot pattern is. Then we're going to do it a second time, maybe even a third time, see if we can replicate it. So let me get this paper target or a cardboard target set up. How cool is that? Them hardboard card targets over there, they just take up too much good shooting space and they're a pain in the butt to maneuver around. So we just sprung, strung a cable across. And you got to keep the thing, the targets on cables, and when we're not using it, we can push it back up out of the way. So we got our target right there. And we got a mark in there, three. That's three yards, five yards, seven yards, and right here, ten yards. So this here's our target. Yeah, our goal is to get all keep all of our rounds in this box marked the letter A. For those of you not familiar with these type of targets. They got perforated outlines. They'll mark A. There's A there, B, C, and D. A is our objective. So the ammunition that we'll be using is Blazer 115 grain, and this is steel cased ammo. And we're going to start at the three yards. Now this isn't a quick, you know, quick fire shooting. This is slow, well, well placed rounds. We'll do three, three rounds at three yards.
So it's at three yards. Now we're going to go to five yards. Three, three rounds at five yards. One, two, three. So now we'll go to seven yards. We round seven yards. One, two, and we're kind of starting to drip a little low there. So now we'll do three yards at ten yards. Ten yards, got it all in the A. One, two, three. So now we're going to do the exact same drill over again. Three, five, seven, ten yards. Using the exact same ammo. And we're going to see if this shot pattern is consistent or not. Because this by itself means absolutely nothing to you. Got to be able to know it's like a science, you know, a, a science experiment. Got you. Now you got to repeat the, you know, the test to see if the outcome's the same. Now if there's a huge deviation from this, then I believe that it's more of operating. You no, know, it's the shooter, not the pistol. So we're going to do three yards. Three rounds. So it's our three, and that's kind of, this is our first shots right here. One, two, three. So, so far, our results are coming at the same. We're going to use a little bit of different colored tape here. Now, granted, I was aiming at a different, you no, know, you no, know, different spot on the board. However, the shot pattern still has the same, you know, you know, still, you know, comes out the same. So now we're going to do three rounds at five yards. So we're still in the A. One, two, three. Now we're going to go to 
my seven yards and do three rounds. Look at this. This shot here, right along perforation for the first time around was seven yards. Got a shot right here, seven yards. So you can see, it is still following the same pattern. I will say that, Pat, you know, those shots, those three shots I just fired, I was going at a little bit faster pace. So now we're going to go three rounds, ten yards. Well, we had a low left, which I believe... That was operator error, a deficiency in the shooter. So, I'm going to go back to 10 yards, do it all over again. I'm going to claim a mulligan. So even with that mold, again, still not much improvement on that. I did have to reload. So I got one round there. And got those two right there. So overall, it does still show the same type of shot pattern. However, I'm not entirely satisfied with this, with this experiment. So we're going to do it again. So now we're going to do this again. Three rounds at three, five, seven, and ten yards. But this time we're going to use the bullseye target. And we're going to do it twice. That way, you know, and on the second time we're going to swap out the paper. That way we have the same point of reference, you know, or the, the same point of aim. So there should be no deviation. And... Providing that I'm using the same grip, the same trigger squeeze, or in other words, if I'm being consistent in my shooting abilities, I should have both of these should be fairly close. So let's see. So first, it's going to be three rounds, three yards. So, right there, it's our first three rounds. It's a real nice tight group there. Come on, get on there, you. There we go. So now we're going to go three rounds of five yards.
kind of going a little low. But still, a nice tight group in there. Two there and one there. Now let's go to seven yards. Well, there's a nice shot right there, right on the money. But I don't know what it is about that seven yard line where I always want to get that one right there. So this past shot pattern is a little spread out at the seven yard mark. So now let's go to ten yards. We got round there and two hits there. I don't know what them two are about, but a low left. We'll put a piece of tape there and a piece of tape there. So now we're going to change out this target. Repeat it, and we should have pretty much the same results. All right, so we got a new target up, and I made it a point to get the target in the exact, or as close to being in the exact same position as the previous target, just to limit any, as much deviation as possible. So, three yards, three rounds. So there we go. One, there's two there and one there. Don't know about you, but it looks pretty much the same as the first group, the first round. However, at three yards, there really shouldn't be much deviation as it is. So now, let's go to five yards. One, two, three, that's at five yards. Now let's go to seven yards. Now remember at seven yards, these two hits were there, so let's see if that repeats. So we got two hits at seven yards. I don't see a third hole. Which can only be one, two things happened. I made it through, I shot through the exact same hole. Or the bullet bounced off. As we all know, I don't miss. All right, let's go to 10 yards, three rounds. And we got that one little right there. So let's go get the other target and then compare them. 
So this is my first the first shot pattern mm -hmm. and this is the second one. Now as you can see you know, it does show a consistent low left shooting. Now whether it's that it's whether the pistol or the shooter and I'll let y'all debate that. I have my own theory, theory and that is well, that's just, you know, you know, my shooting ability or lack thereof. The grouping's pretty decent. And I believe, yep, I still have a round in the chamber. So you're gonna let me safely dispose of this round. That's where that was. I safely disposed of that round. The so overall with the reflex, I don't think it's inherently an issue with the pistol. And this is an internal hammered fire pistol, so if you're used to, you know the, you know the feel. In the, or actually, I should say, the response of which you would get from a striker fob pistol is going to be a little different. So let's slide this thing up out of the way and go to, uh, let's go to that Gerson High Power. So this here is the Gerson High Power, and I've done a review in a previous, uh, in you know, a previous video, and one of the things that I did not like about this pistol are these grips. Now I did put some, uh, you know, went on Amazon and you know, came across some wood grips that just did not, uh, well, they were just interfering with the safety on it. And, which I did not you know, did not like at all. So I happen to have me a set of uh, Pacmire thin grips that we're going to put on. These are rosewood. And see how well these do. Now, Probably one of the most useful tools that you can have in your range bag is a screwdriver set. And that, you know, when, you know, this particular screwdriver set that I have, you know, I, you know, I use this quite a bit. I mean, it definitely comes in handy. It has all the bits that you could possibly think of. And on top of that, they're magnetic. So you don't have to and you know, gets a little bit more assurance. We're gonna use this screw here. Or screwdriver thing, loosen this screw. I know another nice thing about having an actual screwdriver set in your range bag. Not only can you do this stuff on the go, but you need to make adjustments, put it to your red dot. Now you have the correct tool for the job. You're not using you know, a piece of spent shell casing scratching up all the, you know, the surfacing now on your red dot. Now I have the right tool for the right job. Tight, very good. The screwdriver handle itself has got a nice little swivel action on it.
Yeah, it's on there pretty good. Now the nice thing about this tool kit, it's got another little tool in there. Got ourselves a nice little pry bar. So you ain't got to worry about scratching up the finish on your pistol. How cool is that? And now that we got ourselves that pry bar, nice little pair of very precision tweezers should you need it. Need them. And all these bits stay nice and they are held in with magnets so it stays nice and secure. Yeah, where you knock over your, your range bag or something like that, or knock it over, you ain't got bits all over the place. Alright, so let's tighten that down. And the case for this stuff. Uh, the other nice thing I like about it is it's compact steel. So you know it's going to last. I've had this for quite some time. Not a single you know, bit has stripped. Very strong. Check this out. This thing just stores right in there just like that. And when you're done, there you go, all held in there, nice and compact. Now, if you're interested in purchasing something like, you know, one of these, I do sell them off, you know, crookedhorserifleypistol.com. And for a low, you know, for a reasonable price, and you don't pay, you know, the important thing is you don't pay tax, and you don't pay shipping. All right, how sharp does that look? Does that look sharp or what? Much better than in cheap other grips. Let's see how well it inter you know, interacts with the safety. Good, it does not obstruct the safety at all. I'm looking forward to putting some ammunition in this magazine and see how it shoots. So we are starting our e-commerce e-commerce store at www.crookedhorserifleypistol.com right now it's kind of you know our selection is limited but we're growing if you need any tactical accessories you need a uh, some tools, something like this, a precision screwdriver set, and I'll tell you, something like this is, you know, it's nothing but an asset to your range bag. Because, you know, anything built by man will fail. Screws come loose. Sights might need adjusted. And it's always better to have the right tools on hand. All right, let's see if we can't hit it. Much better. It's amazing. And you take a 
a little bit of moment of time, you know, to self critique your shooting abilities and just making a small correction, you know, just how much it can improve your shooting. I'm the kind of I don't know if I'm if I could show you what was happening. All right, pistol's clear. Put that on safe. So, my right arm here, here with my grip, see, right now it's fully extended and locked out. What was happening is, it was just, as I was shooting, just kind of, that right arm was just starting to want to bend. Now it's shooting like, you know, kind of bent instead of, instead of fully extended. Once it's fully extended, I was able to, I was finding that I was getting more rounds. You know, where, you know, place where I wanted them to be placed. And I don't know how far I was going out, but I think I was hitting, uh, it's only, you know, at least getting 50 yards, you know, 50 meters out, I should say, because, you know, my range, you know, my steel plates are set up in metric. I'm going to go take a walk and see what I hit. So I know all them paint, all them plates have been, were painted you know, before I left my last shoot. So I did take a walk down range just to confirm, and yep, I was hitting steel at 50, you know, 50 meters out, uh, which is just a little over 50 yards. So yeah, you know, just a you know, little fine, you know, just take a note of, uh, you know, my grip and make a small change, and you know, screw coming loose on there, so we're going to use my little screwdriver set here. You know, to tighten that up. I have to put some blue Loctite on that screw there. Keep it from wanting to scooch on out. There we go, get that in nice and tight. So could it possibly be that my arm causing the problems all along? Maybe. We'll have to keep that in mind for the next time we're out on the range. You no know, and it just kind of drives in the point. You know, the key the key element that uh, you always have to, you know, self-critique your shooting and understand that there's always room for improvement. So, now with the reflex shooting low left, honestly, I think that's all me. That ain't the pistol. Now, that's, you know, just simply, you know, the way I was holding the, you know, holding the gun. A Gerson High Power definitely looks a heck of a lot better with this pack mile grips. I'll be honest with you, I'm almost tempted to take the OEM grips off the Springfield SA35 and put uh, some pack mile grips on that as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for coming out and joining them here at the range. Crooked Horse Rifle from Pistol Island, Lamar County, Mississippi. Tell me what you think of the new sliding target. You know, my plan is uh, I you want know, to have actually two hanging from that cable and then one at the 25, you know, 25 meter out mark out or 25 yards. And, you know, have one, you know, the same thing when it comes time to zero. I could use for zeroing instead of pushing and pulling, you know, them big wood, uh, you know, target stands out. 
And again, if you need something, you know, if you're looking for a, a, an awesome, you know, addition to your to your range bag, highly recommend get yourself one of these. You know, made of high quality, high quality materials. Whole, you know, a whole range of bits that uh, you know to use out. You know that you're going to need up out on the range, whether it be torque, Phillips, flathead. Uh, Heck, you even got uh, you know, some triangle and that was some two prong bits. I don't even know what the heck called them in there. Got some Allen head uh, bits. I uh, also have a pry bar coming handy. A little pair of tweezers. You never know, you're going to need a pair of them. And it all just slides and it's kept nice and secure in, this, in the metal box. You go to crookedhorserifepistol.com, $39.99, free shipping, no sales tax. So again, I'd like to thank you for coming out and joining us. And until the next time, thank you for shooting with us.